I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We are in Joshua chapter 9. We've been looking at uh, Israel and the Gibeonites. And from this, we learn the importance of being careful that we do not get too friendly with the enemy. And uh, sometimes we forget who our enemy is. And um, we have a tendency to listen to him when we should not be. So we learn from this that we must not be too careful with the enemy. And that's what Israel sees here. Keep in mind, as we've been moving through Joshua, that they, first of all, defeated Jericho. And Jericho is a type of the world. And uh, the world was defeated, and we have the promise of victory over the world in our walk with the Lord. And we see that in verse, uh, P, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. Then they came to Ai, which was a type of the flesh, and it took some struggle, but they overcame the flesh. There was victory over the flesh, and we can have victory over the flesh as we battle for the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 7, 24 and 25 tells us that. Then Gibeon here is a type of the devil, and the devil can be defeated, but the key is we must submit to God, draw an eye to God, he'll draw an eye to you, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Too many people try to try to resist the devil without submitting to God, and that does not work. So we've been looking at some things about Satan here. In verses 1 through 13, we've seen that the enemy can be very deceptive, and we've been seeing some of the things that he uses. Let's read uh, Joshua chapter 9, and be picking up in verse 6 today. It says, And they went to Joshua unto the camp at Gilgal, and said unto him, and to the men of Israel, we become from a far country, now therefore make ye a league with us. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, Peradventure ye do dwell among us, and how shall we make a league with you? And they said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who are ye, and from whence come ye? And they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come, because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard the fame of him, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sion, king of Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants, therefore now make ye a league with us. This our brig we took hot for our provision out of our houses, on the day that we came forth to go unto you, but now, behold, it is dry and it is moldy. And these bottles of wine which we filled were new, and behold, they be rent. And these are garments, and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. So as we came through this, we saw that, first of all, here the enemy uses deceptive wiles in verse 4. And we've also seen that that is a tremendous picture of our enemy, the devil, because the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6 and verse 11 that we fight an enemy that uses wiles to get his way in our lives. And that word wiles literally means deceit, trickery, and cunning arts. And friends, we need to remember that just like Peter, Satan desires to do the exact same thing to us. He desires to sift us that so he may have us as wheat. And friends, we need to beware of the snares of the traps that he sets for us. He also uses deceptive wares, as we saw in verses 4 and 5 of Joshua, when we looked at the Gibeonites, and we realized that Satan is the same thing. He does not come, um, you know, Satan does not come to you with, with in a rig suit with a pointy tail and horns and a pitchfork in his hand. No, no, friends, he comes many times as an angel of light. And he will make his plan appear, appear to be the perfect thing for your life. So beware of every impulse that comes down the line. Check out everything by the word of God and by the will of God. And the Lord will always lead you in the right way. Now as we come into verses 6 through 13 today, we see that they use deceptive words here. Notice in these verses that these men lied. Verse 6, they said, they went to Joshua and unto the camp of Gilgal and said unto him and to the children of Israel, We be come from a far country. Now therefore make ye a league with us. So they said, We came from a far country. Then in verse 9, And they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come, because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard of the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt. Then in verses 11 and 12, Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, 
take victuals with you for the journey and go to meet them and say unto them, We are your servants, therefore now make ye a league with us. This our bread we took hot for our provision out of our houses on the day that we came to go unto you, but now it is dry and it is moldy. Friends, in these verses, the Gibeonites claimed to be something that they were not. And uh, they were very careful in what they referred to also in verse 10. It says, And all that he did to the king, to all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sion, king of Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. They did not mention anything that had happened since Israel had crossed the Jordan River to try to give the impression that they had indeed been traveling for quite some time and that they were not up to date on the latest news and achievements of the people of Israel. Friends, again, this is a wonderful picture of our enemy, the devil. He will use slick and enticing speech to get you to yield to his plans for your life. Uh, this is something that should not surprise us. This is a very old tactic of the devil. As a matter of fact, the very first time that the devil shows up in the word of God, he uses these tactics when he talks to Eve. Come with me, if you would, in your Bible, back to Genesis chapter 3. And let's read verses 1 through 6. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. If you want a tremendously interesting study, contrast what God says to them in chapter 2, with what Satan says to them in chapter 3, and with what the woman says. Satan here, first of all, begins by telling her that she could question God's word. He begins by saying, Yea, hath God said, and Satan put a question mark where God put a period, and he tries to get Eve to come to the place that she will question the word of God. And then he told her that God did not really mean what God had said in verse 3. It says, But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. God really didn't mean what he said. Verse 4, the serpent says unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Friends, then he goes to the place in verse 5 that he convinces Eve that God is holding out on her. He says, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof that your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So in other words, as we look at this, we see that the devil will give you every reason in the world to justify the things that he wants to do to you. Then when you have followed him and you are, you are out of God's will and you are in trouble, Satan will discard you like a piece of trash and, <coughs> and leave you to rot in your sins. You know, as I was thinking about this, I was wondering, I wonder what the devil told Cain to get him to the place that he was willing to, to kill Abel. What did Satan tell David to get him to the place that he was willing to commit adultery with Bathsheba? What did the devil tell Judas to get him to the place that he would betray the Lord Jesus. What has the devil told you in the past, and what is he telling you now? Friends, I encourage you, do not listen to him. He does not have your best interest at heart. He is tre he is uh, deceitful, and he is a liar. In 2 Corinthians 2, and verse 11, it says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Friends, listen to me as we close today. Satan desires to gain an advantage over you. And to do this, he will use every trick in the book to get you to follow him into failure. And you need to be very careful. Let me give you this verse as we close. You know the verse, but let's read it once again. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 and in verse 8. This verse tells you exactly what the devil is up to. 
It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Friends, let me tell you what Satan is up to. He wants you. He wants your family. He wants your testimony. He wants your church. Friends, the bottom line is this. If you have it and it's from the Lord, Satan wants it. And to get it, he will do anything that he can do. Do not be ignorant of his devices. We will study more about Satan as we move through the remainder of this chapter. Have a great day.